Let's talk about MMSC estimation. So we've talked about how probability works for detection. It's also an excellent foundation for making inferences from partial noisy observations. So um, some terminology you'll hear surrounding this is the uh, words estimation theory or statistical inference, right? And you might also hear in statistics this idea of regression, which is related. The key idea is that you want to estimate the values of a set of unobserved random variables using the values of a set of observed random variables. So there are some things that you see or observe, and there are other things that you don't. And you want to predict the things that you don't observe from the things that you do observe. As an example, let's say I want to find the location of a target, and I've collected some radar measurements. Or um, in a biomedical context, maybe I want to estimate the heart rate of a patient, and I've made electrical measurements um, using a device. Or perhaps I have an aerial drone, and I want to identify the right model parameters for a system I'm trying to fit to the drone's movements from its flight test data. Right? And we're going to start with the scalar case in this video to build intuition. So we just have one variable that we want and one we observe. Uh, formally, we're going to have this framework that has all of the ingredients we need to get started. So there's going to be a prior distribution, and that is going to be the marginal distribution of the unobserved random variable, which is the quantity we actually want to know. Right? In the discrete case, we'll have a PMF for x, p of x. In the continuous case, a PDF for x, f of x. There's going to be, so here's a cartoon. There's also going to be an observation model. That's how the observation, which we're going to call y, is generated conditioned on x. Okay, so the distribution of y conditioned on x in the discrete case is a conditional PMF, and in the continuous case is a conditional PDF. And finally, our job is going to be um, to come up with some kind of estimation rule, which we're going to call x hat of y. So it's a function of y that outputs an estimate of the unobserved random variable, in this case x. And we use x hat to name this function, which is something that you may or may not have seen before. The reason we do that is so that it's very clear to us that this thing is meant to predict x. And the fact that y is in the parenthesis means that it's a function only of y. Okay, so it's not the value of x, it's a function that we just decided to call x hat, and it takes in y and outputs some uh, prediction for x. Okay, so recall that we were using the probability of error before as a measure of performance. So that's how we were measuring our performance for detection. The problem is, in most estimation scenarios, our estimate will never be exactly equal to the true value x. So when this happens, the probability of error will basically be 1, it will always be wrong for any choice of estimator, even a good one. And therefore, we're going to need a better metric or measure of performance to compare estimators. Because if they all have the same bad performance in terms of probability of error, we have no way of telling them apart. There are lots of different criteria we could pick. Right now, we're going to focus exclusively on mean squared error, which is a good starting point. Uh, it's often abbreviated MSE, and it's just the expectation of x minus x hat of y squared. Okay, so x minus x hat of y is the error. It's the difference between the true thing and your prediction. We'll also be sometimes interested in what we'll call the bias and this is bias in a Bayesian sense, for those who are interested. And this is um, whether or not the estimator satisfies the following condition. So it's unbiased if its error, x minus x hat of y, has zero mean. So if you take the average, you end up with zero. There are stronger notions of unbiasedness that you might find in statistics. This is a Bayesian not uh, notion that uses um, the prior distributions to average. Um, but that's just a little bit of a subtlety. Okay, so one thing we could do, which we're not going to do in this video, um, is we could define ML, maximum likelihood, or MAP, maximum a posteriori, estimators. And these turn out not to be optimal for MSE in general. 
they have a lot of nice properties and in some settings you end up using them, but um, they're not optimal. The optimal estimator is what we call the minimum mean squared error estimator, written as x hat MMSC of y. That gets the smallest possible MSC or mean squared error, and it turns out to be equal to the conditional expectation of x given y equals little y. So the MMSC estimator, which is the best we could ever hope to do within um, the criterion of mean squared error, is just the conditional expectation. And so we finally have an application where this concept is playing a key role. So I'm going to take a moment and show you why this happens. You don't need to know how to do this, or really, if it, you don't follow it and you're not worried about it, you don't have to come back and rewatch this. I just want to go through it once so you can see. All right, so to show that this is the best you could do, what we're going to do is open up this error term or mean squared error term. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the law of total expectation and condition on y on the inside here and then take an outer expectation. And then for this conditional expectation, I'm going to fix y to some value and I'm going to look for the x hat of y for each y that gets me the best possible error. I'm going to expand the square of this term. Okay, so that's just opening up the square. And I'm going to use linearity of expectation um, to split this apart into three parts. And now I'm going to do something a bit odd. I'm going to add and subtract this term, which is e of x given y equals little y squared. Okay, I'm just adding and subtracting it, which is like just keeping zero there, it's fine. The reason I'm doing that is to complete a square. So I'll show you what that square is in a moment. So I'm going to have this e of x squared given y term, e of x given y squared term, and then this other term here, which is what I can control. So this thing turns out to be the only term we can control. The other two are always pot, are always just given to me by the statistics of the problem. And I can make it equal to zero if and only if I make x hat equal to the conditional expectation for every value of little y. And that's the smallest I can ever get the error to be. Okay, so that's why we end up using the conditional expectation. Again, you don't need to know how to derive this or to think about it, but it's just there if you're interested. What are some properties of the MMSC estimator? It has a lot of interesting properties. This is just a quick summary. Um, one is that it's unbiased. So it's unbiased in the sense we talked about before. So basically, if you take its mean, then you'll end up with the mean of x, and that means that the error, which is the mean of x minus x hat, is zero. Okay, the reason for this is just law of total expectation. It is the conditional expectation, so when you average it, you get the average of x. The error of the MMC is also what we call orthogonal to any function g of y of the observation. So specifically, if I take the error from the MMC estimator, multiply by g of y, take the average, I always get zero. Why is this true? Well, again, by law of total expectation, so we're just using this in a bunch of different places, I can condition on y, then I can um, write this inner thing as the conditional expectation. So I'm just plugging in the fact that it's the conditional expectation. And now I'm moving the conditional expectation inside by linearity of expectation. And then I see these two terms are equal and I just get zero. Okay, so one useful consequence of this is it helps us simplify some calculations. So if I try to take the error versus the estimator itself and I average, I get zero and I could use that if I wanted to show that the average error, so the MSC, is actually just equal to the second moment of x minus the second moment of the estimator. So it's really just the difference in their energies. Again, a lot of this might have been too quick. These are just some properties I wanted to list in case you end up using them in a more advanced application. Okay, but we're just going to be focused on the basics. Let's work out an example so we see where all of this is going. So let's just propose a joint PDF. So here's one, it's going to be 12 over 11, x plus one, and the range is gonna be from x going from zero to root y, and then y going from zero to one. Okay, it's zero otherwise. So let's sketch the range. It's just going to be this y equals x squared line, and I have to live between um, zero and that line. So I live in here, that's my range, and I wanna work out what is the MMSE estimator in this specific problem. And here, just to make things a bit more concrete, I'm going to work out the integrals just by plugging in them into a symbolic integrator like Wolfram Alpha or a calculator or whatever you like. 
But for now, let's just write the MMSC estimator. It's the conditional expectation of x given the value y. So I'm writing the conditional expectation as this integral x times the conditional PDF of x given y dx. I need to figure out, before I do anything else, what is this conditional PDF? Well, it's just the joint PDF, which I have, divided by the marginal of y, because that's what I'm given, the value of y. And that's true whenever x and y are in the range, and it's zero otherwise. Okay, I need to know the marginal of y. So I'm going to get the marginal of y, and this is where we're start, going to start to make progress. So I take the integral with respect to x to take it out of the joint PDF, and I look at this plot and I see, well, I should be integrating until I hit this curve. That's where x is equal to root y. So I integrate from 0 to root y, 12 over 11, x plus 1 dx. Okay, if I work this out using a computer, I will get the following expression. 6 over 11, y plus 2 root y, from uh, y going from 0 to 1 and 0 otherwise. So I can take this, plug it into the denominator here. So I've got the joint PDF on the top and this thing going into the denominator on the bottom. Okay, again, if you just left it as an integral, you, didn't, you don't need to do this, but you know, I'm just trying to show you all the details. Okay, and I'm just writing out the range again, just so that we're very clear. And finally, I'm gonna plug in this joint PDF into this expression. Okay, and again, I'm going to use a computer to integrate the result, okay? So I'm just putting this in here and I'm going to get 2y plus 3 root y over 3 root y plus 6. So now, once I have the MMSC estimator, which is this particular function of y, I'm going to ask, what's the mean squared error that I get from that estimator, which is the best I could possibly get on this problem if I'm trying to predict x from y? Okay, so this just means I'm taking the expectation of x minus the uh, estimator, which is a function of y squared, and I'm integrating that actually not just over one variable, but both. So I'm averaging this function over both variables. It's x minus whatever this estimator is as a function of y squared, joint PDF, dx dy, because this is trying to find the average of this particular function, error squared. Okay, so I integrate first from zero to root y, and then zero to one, I get x minus the estimator, which we worked out above, Okay, I'm going to square the whole thing, plug in the joint PDF, 12 over 11, x plus 1, dx, dy. Now I'm going to go to a computer. It's going to be a little bit of a complicated expression here, but we're going to get the approximation, the decimal approximation as well. So, okay, I get this expression. That's fine. And this works out to be about 0 0.05. Okay, great. So this is end-to-end -end how you'd calculate the MMSC estimator for a joint PDF. Finally, before we wrap up, I just want to point out that if you have jointly Gaussian random variables, so let's say that x and y, the random variables that you have, you know that they're jointly Gaussian, then you're in luck because the MMSC estimator in that case is a linear function of y. You don't need to worry about it being a nonlinear function. In particular, because the conditional expectation of x given y equals little y, is mu x plus rho x y sigma x over sigma y, y minus its mean. We also have this alternate expression, which is the mean of x plus covariance of x y over variance of y times y minus its mean. And the mean squared error is just we, something, again, we can work out. We know from the properties that we can write this as 1 minus rho squared sigma x squared, which is just variance of x minus covariance of x y squared over variance of y. So if we actually had jointly Gaussian random variables, we were asked to work out the MMSC estimator and the mean squared error would be pretty simple.